What's up, jaywalkers? Do you guys like quotes? I like quotes. I ran across a quote from Diedrich Bonhoeffer, and he's a guy who was like a theologian from Germany at around the time of World War II, where all this terrible stuff was happening to Jewish people with the Holocaust and all that we know happened in history. And this is one of the things that he said, only the obedient believe. And it got me thinking. It really got me like wondering about if I believe that that only the obedient, the people who actually are following the call of Jesus in the commandments that he said, if they're the ones that are believing. And I ended up looking at a lot of the things that people were suggesting that we kind of talk about, we address. They're things like worry, fear, anxiety, depression. Looking at kind of where those things stem from. Like if you trace them back, what's the root of all of those things? And I think that the root of all those things goes back to disobedience. And God has told us, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And sometimes we think like sin is just a mistake that we make. Something that we've done that we kind of like shouldn't have done or like it was an accident. And we kind of justify it by saying that was uh, something I, I, you know, I tried but kind of fell short. But most of the time when the Bible talks about sin, it's referring to it as a deliberate act of disobedience. And that kind of struck me this week, especially when I read that quote from Bonhoeffer that said, only the obedient believe. And it got me thinking like, what is it about obedience that's hard for us? Why are we choosing something other than obedience? Why are we choosing disobedience? One of my favorite chapters in the Bible, oddly enough, is there's actually two of them found back in the Old Testament. One's in the book of Leviticus chapter 26. The other is in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'm not going to have time to look at both, but go check out Leviticus 26 at some time this week. It talks about blessings for obedience and like curses for disobedience, basically. And Deuteronomy 30 has a little section called the choice of life and death. That's where we're going to look today. Starts in verse 11 of Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'm reading from the ESV. For this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. But the very word, but the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you can do it. So this time frame where we're talking about, this is after what I talked to you about last time about the Israelites, they sent their spies. They're like looking to go into the promised land. They come back and some people are scared and other people are like, let's just go right now. Not that many though. And so they are about to go into this promised land. Moses knows already that he's not going to be able to go. This is his last book of the Bible, the last book of the first five books of the Bible. Um, and he is going to die and he knows that. But he is getting these people prepared for what they're about to walk into because he knows the challenges that await them and the things that are going to be difficult for them in this new step that they're going to walk into, which is walking into the promised land. And so he says, look, God's not making it hard for you to get his truth. He's giving it to you. We have it even more now than they had it back then because we have the words of Jesus and the example of him. He is the one who came down from heaven. He is the one who crossed the seas. He's the one that brought us the truth. And even back then though, they had God's promises. They had his word. And so it says, God's not making it hard for you. He's telling you, he's giving you the choice right here. And this is the choice. Verse 15, see, I have set before you today, life and good, death and evil. It's right there in front of you, one in one hand, one in the other. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. So that's the first part. He's like, if you'll do the things that I've commanded you to do, they're not to hurt you. They're not to restrict you. They're because they're what's best for you. If you'll do those things, then things are going to go great because you're going to have all of my promises, all of my blessings. I'm going to be with you. We're going to do this together. 
And if you add what Jesus said, he wouldn't just say, love the Lord your God. He would say, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor. Love the, those around you. Love others. And then it says in verse 17, but if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them. Now, when we hear that, we think like false gods. And a lot of times that's what it used to be. But now it's gods of like money. It's gods of like what we want to watch on TV or what we want to listen to, things that are unwholesome, sexual desires. It's things like that now. It's pursuing our own wants and our own wishes instead of what God has for us. That's how we pursue and serve other gods today. Little G, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish if you do these things. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. See, this is what God's done. He has said it very clearly in front of us. He said, this is the way that's gonna bring you life. This is the way that you're gonna flourish. Obey these things, not because I'm being like some dictator God, but because I actually created the way things work and I know what's best for you. And if you'll do these things, you'll have life, you'll live. Therefore choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. See, God wants us to choose life. He wants us to choose obedience. He wants us to choose to follow his commandments. A lot of times we just choose something else. We say to God, I'm not gonna do what you said because I think what I said is better. And, and, and that leads to difficulty and death. And that leads to those things that I was alluding to earlier. It leads to anxiety, it leads to worry, it leads to fear, it leads to doubt. It leads to problems in your life because you're opposed to the God who brings life. You're actually choosing those things that don't bring life. And you're doing it not by accident. You're doing it on purpose in terms of rebellion. And I just feel like we had to go back to that base. It's so like simple of a concept. God said before you, life and death. He said, this is the truth. We have justified, we have lied to ourselves. We believe things that aren't true. And for that reason, we've rebelled against God. And that rebellion is the root cause of everything else that's going on in our life. It's the root cause of disbelief. Bonhoeffer said this also. I was reading him this week and it was just so good. He said, you complain that you cannot believe. No one should be surprised that they cannot come to believe so long as in deliberate disobedience, they flee or reject some aspect of Jesus's commandment. Some aspect, not like they're doing most of what Jesus said, and that's good enough, or that's awesome, way to go guys. It's like, if there's a thing in your life that you're being disobedient in, that thing can cause disbelief. That thing can draw a wedge between you and God. It doesn't mean that you're not saved. It doesn't mean that you should go beat yourself up because you're not perfect. That's not what God's saying. What he's saying is, those things that you're choosing, the when you're choosing your own way over his way, when you're choosing to be disobedient, even you, though you know what God says, you're trying to make sense of it in your own mind. When you do those things, it creates like a barrier still between you and God. You're choosing death. And even though your eternity is sealed, even though your eternity is set, you are walking in something that is going to be in direct defiance to God. And when you do that, even in a part of what he said, that part's not blessed. That part can bring uh, uneasiness or an unsettled spirit on you. And you just feel like there's something off. And it's because there is something off. It says they remain disobedient and console themselves with a forgiveness that they grant themselves. And in doing so, they close themselves off from the word of God. See, what he's actually saying there is, God grants you forgiveness, like 100%. But then he says, go and sin no more. This is very like common for Jesus. I and mean, he wasn't saying go be perfect. He was saying, go and try your best to be obedient. Don't make excuses. Don't grant yourself this like 
free pass to do this one thing that you feel like you just would like to do, right? And we don't think of some of these things as rebellion. We think of them as that's what other people are doing. Everybody's doing that. That's the main reason that I get, honestly, for, for people doing things. When they make a mistake, when they do the wrong thing, my own kids included. Well, Rio did this. Well, Koa did this. Well, Joy did this. And they're giving an, a reason as something that somebody else did. That's not how it works. You're responsible for you. And so the Bible is super clear about this. God has set in front of us life and death, freedom and bondage. He's saying, here it is. It's not hard. I'm not making it difficult. I'm showing you what it is. You don't have to go across the world. It's right here. It's in the word of God. And so if you don't know what God says, this is where you find what he says. And I just want to encourage you to, to follow him, to pursue him, to choose life. Just like he says, he doesn't want any of us to miss what he has for us. We miss it because we deliberately rebel from him and think that our way is better than his. It starts back there. That's the root cause of all these other things. Only the obedient truly believe. Let's pray. Maybe you're not being obedient right now. Maybe you're against God. Let's, let's ask him to come in. Maybe there's a certain area, one little thing that you're not giving Jesus. He wants it. He's asked for it. That's what it means to follow him. It's complete surrender every single day. It's giving him that thing that, that he's asking for, that he's asked you to walk in. So let's pray. Say, dear God, thank you for being with me. Thank you for coming and bringing this truth to me so that it's not hard to find, so that it's not off somewhere else. And God, I believe that Jesus has what's best for me. I believe that he came to save me. I, from that sin, from that deliberate and obedient disobedience and defiance that I've chosen. And God, I admit those sins and I'm sorry for them. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for those things. And I thank you that he took my place in the death that I deserve. I want to make him my Lord and Savior today. I want to live through him and for him and with him and in him. And God, I pray your spirit will come to guide me to do that. In those areas, God, that I'm being disobedient, that I'm still choosing my own way or something else or to follow what other people are doing, I give that to you also. Take those things from me. Give me the power to walk in obedience to your commandments of loving you and loving others. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jay Walkers, we'd love to talk to you about that more on Wednesday night. Join us on Wednesday for our Zoom time. We'll probably do some group time about that, talking through what some of these things mean because it is important to do that. We're the body of Christ and we get to do that together. If this is your first time praying that prayer, text the word BOLD, B-O-L-D, to 94000. We'd love to come alongside you, pray with you, talk to you. Hope you guys have a great week. See you soon.